show your support. Like, share and subscribe. British guy and welcome to my discussion video for all of the PlayStation Plus games for PlayStation 4 in the month of September. I will be going through the following games, Infamous Second Son, Riggs Mechanized Combat League and Child of Light. I will be giving a brief overview of the game, a bit of an insight in terms of the gameplay as well as the visuals and the sound for each of the games. And then at the end I'll be rating it buy, try or fly. Then I'll be rating these games buy, where I think it's worth just buying this game for market value. Try, whereby it's certainly worth trying it now that it's a free game till the end of the month to see if you like it yourself. Or fly where it's really not worth even bothering to try this game at all and just fly away from it as quick as you can. So let's get started with Infamous Second Son. Now in this game you play as the character Delson Rowe who is voiced by Troy Baker and he is basically a delinquent. He's got no sort of drive or direction in his life and just goes around town tagging areas with graffiti and often gets into trouble with his brother who is a local sheriff. At the beginning of the game he is part of like a community center and there is an attack at the beginning and within that attack he becomes a conduit. Now these conduits are seen as bioterrorists by a government organization known as the DUP and their job is to basically hunt all these conduits down and arrest them all and put them into high security prisons and there was one in and around this community centre and that's why the DUP were there. Basically by the end of it Delsin's friends lives are sort of in danger and he tries to save them and a lot of them get hurt by one of the conduits. Now this leads him on a journey to Seattle so that he can absorb this power and use it to hit all his friends when you manage to sneak into Seattle, because there are quite a few troops on the border stopping you getting in at a checkpoint, once you make it past them, there are various bases set up in and amongst town, and your job is basically to wreak as much havoc as you can, bring these down, and that in turn sort of brings these conduits out into the open, so that you can defeat them and absorb their power and move on to sort of the next area and the next boss. Now while you're doing this there are various other challenges that you can undertake there to boost your power and your stats so that you can unlock new skills and some of these are quite benevolent and some not so much and that plays into the kind of character that you want to create for yourself whether you kind of go down the good guy role or whether you wreak more havoc. So the area you're in is quite open. It's dubbed as open world, but you are kind of restricted as to what area you should be in at any one time. And fairly standard as well with, with most sort of AAA games. It's quite high action, cutscenes sort of littered throughout, third person perspective, and as I said, this sort of open world area. The only problem I found with it is this became very, very repetitive of going into bases, wreaking havoc and destroying certain areas and bringing the base down, and then moving on to the next one and doing the same. It was very much a rinse and repeat. The early stages of the game were very story heavy, but once I arrived in Seattle, I was just going from base to base doing the same sort of thing, and it became quite repetitive very, very quickly, and really turned me off of it. Quite a few months ago, the sort of spin-off game to this, First Light, was out, and that as well was a free PlayStation Plus game, and I played that and absolutely loved it. It had a nice balance between story and gameplay, and the missions that you were doing fed back into the story all the time. There was a reason as to why you were doing what you were doing. Although there was the same sort of feel to it of, of going around and causing a bit of anarchy, there was a clear reason as to why. 
Whereas with Second Son, once you get into Seattle, the story really backs off. I don't know whether it was just because I needed to push through this and sort of break that barrier to get the, the storyline back again, but it got to a point where I was just doing the same thing again and again and again, and I just got bored of it, to be honest. Which is a shame, because the rest of the game really, really works very nicely. The controls are very intuitive, very easy to pick up. As you go through the game and you unlock more abilities, that increases your arsenal and just makes it a bit more fun to play with. The voice acting, from what I saw at the beginning, was very, very solid. And I really, really wanted to enjoy this game, especially, as I said, with my experience of First Light. But unfortunately, I just really couldn't get into it because it became far, far too repetitive. And the story just took such a back seat so quickly. I just lost all interest and investment with it, unfortunately. Moving on to the next game, we have Riggs Mechanised Combat League. Now, this one is a VR game. So, for those of you that don't have the VR system, unfortunately this isn't really for you. Of course you could purchase it now with the option to download it in the future if you were to get a VR system. And to be honest, I would recommend doing that anyway, because you never know, it might be something that you enjoy in the future. And while you can get it for free, you might as well purchase it now. Now, in terms of what this game is, you are in control of a rig and there are four types to choose from ranging from sort of small and stealthy to big lumbering heavy duty machines and once you get through the initial tutorial section which is very very detailed it gets you used to how the rigs move around and how to use the weapon system you are basically thrown in as a rookie into a professional league and they treat this very much like a sport very much like you were in the nfl or if you've played recent uh, formula one games where you start right at the bottom and the objective is to acquire better rigs better teammates and really boost your team to win leagues and win tournaments as you go through once you are let loose and you've got through the tutorial, and I was very happy that the tutorial was there, it was a little bit long, but I think it was necessary. Once you do get through that and you select your rig and your team, you are thrown straight into the mix in a league. And what's nice about this as well is there are various different game modes, so you're not playing the same match again and again and again. There are sort of death matches, there are ways of going into overdrive and actually scoring a goal by going through hoops. And you are graded in terms of the team and individually as well. In addition to this, you are required to manage things like sponsorship deals. And to unlock those, you have to meet certain criteria within the matches. So it's not just a case of winning a match. It's you're, you're trying to feed all these different things into one game at once. And it really fleshes out that world. And because you are completely immersed within it with the VR set, you feel like you are in this, this other world. It's brilliant. The only major negative with it, other than the fact that for me, and I do unfortunately suffer with this quite a bit when playing VR games, is I can only play in small bursts. I don't know what it is, but if they're very fast-paced games like Riggs is, I feel a bit nauseous and a bit wobbly, but that is just me, and it's not just this game that does that to me. There are other sort of fast, high-paced VR games that do do that to me, so I'm not going to penalise the game itself for that, because that is something that affects me personally, and I know that the... VR system affects different people in different ways so maybe that doesn't affect you in which case you can enjoy it for hours and hours on end but the main drawback I found with this is very very difficult at the beginning and I don't know how long I've got to stick with this very very difficult initial curve before you sort of start seeing the rewards 
from it because obviously the more you're losing matches and you're not the player that's the best performing player in your team the longer it will take to accrue points to get new rigs and unlock better teammates which will obviously then make things easier for you winning more matches as it stands at the moment i've already been knocked out of uh, the tournament in the first round and i haven't won a single game in the league yet and quite a lot of the uh, the matches i am finding it very difficult to even be vaguely competitive i don't know whether that's just me not being very good at the game or the fact that it's just very, very difficult at the beginning because there's only so much you can unlock. And the opposition have much better rigs. They've got much better firepower. They're much quicker. The teammates work together better. So I'm going to persevere and hopefully break through that initial difficulty curve. But really, that's the only negative. The world looks brilliant, sounds brilliant, feels like you're really in this world although obviously you're sitting down so you kind of lose that immersion because you can't feel yourself running around these pitches because you're doing all the other bits outside of the game you really do feel like you're in this game world and they've done everything possible to make this feel like um, a genuine sport and really get you involved in all aspects of it it is brilliant Finally, we have Child of Light, and this game is also available for PS3. However, I did play this on the PS4, so I will be including it in my PS4 video. Now, in this game, you control a character called Aurora, who is a princess, and at the very beginning of the game, she gets very ill and falls into a deep sleep, and you are told that she has actually died. However, this then transitions to her waking up in this magical world and she has been told that she is this child of light, hence the name of the game, and that there is a dark force within this world and she is tasked with ridding this land of that darkness. And very early on, you are taken sort of from section to section. It's, it's very linear. It's almost like a platform game in terms of that mixed with RPG because there's random battles with monsters throughout the map and your stats level up like a traditional um, RPG. The battles themselves are all turn based and based on your sort of your strength stats and your defense stats and HP and MP and everything like that. So if you're used to that kind of old school turn based RPG you'll be able to get used to this combat system very, very easily. And the game itself is split up into different sections. I am currently at the fourth section, and you kind of work your way through this platform area to this big fight at the end, or this puzzle, and then you just get this bit more peppering as to exactly what's happened in this land, what this darkness is, why you are there, and as you progress through, you meet other seemingly sort of lost people in this world and they join with you and you're able to build up a party. So it's not just you against the world. You you meet sort of new friends and build up this party together and basically move from section to section in order to rid the land of this darkness as it stands at the moment, not a lot has been revealed to me, but it's very, very engaging. The gameplay itself is very, very easy to pick up. The art style is very cartoony and looks beautiful on the PS4. The sound along with it, it's kind of old style medieval type with a sort of basic fantasy element. So it sounds really nice as well. And I mean, by no means is it going to set the world alight. This isn't a new concept that has been tried here, but it's a very, very nice game to play, really. And because you can play it on the PS3 as well, it's opened up to a lot more people and not just those that have got a PS4. But if you do have both, I do suggest getting it on that just because it's been ported to that really nicely and has just upscaled the, the graphics, the smoothness of the gameplay 
and the sound as well was just that little bit nicer as you would expect so then buy try or fly let's start off with all three games and their current prices on playstation store as you can see infamous second son costs 34.99 however i did get this for christmas last year and i know it's actually cheaper than that in most stores also if you're not too bothered about getting second hand versions I'm sure you can pick this up a lot cheaper than $34.99. Riggs currently is retailing for $24.99, which for a VR game is a pretty decent price. And Child of Light is $11.49. Now, because of its shortcomings that I mentioned with Infamous Second Son, I would certainly say try this game for yourself, because it might just be that I needed to power on through but I completely lost interest with it, which is a real shame because, as I said, First Light was so brilliant. I certainly wouldn't buy it for $34.99. If you can find it cheaper, maybe around $10.15 for second hand, then it might be worth purchasing if you know the series very well. But give it a go. Till the end of the month, it is free and see what you make of it yourself. In terms of rigs, $24.99 is a brilliant price for any VR game at the moment. A lot of the ones that are sort of under the £40 mark are almost like tech demos. So to get a full game for under £40 on the VR system is brilliant. It's so immersive and I like my sports games. So personally, I would say even $24.99 is definitely worth purchasing this game. But obviously you've got until the end of the month to pick this up for free. So if you've got a VR system, pick this game up as soon as you can. And finally, Child of Light. Again, nice fun game, especially if you're really into your sort of older school RPG turn-based strategy type games. It's only 11 49 If you've got a PS3 but no PS4, you can still pick this game up. And I would say pick it up now. Again, while it's free, but if you happen to miss that and you, you can only get it for 11 49 I still think it's worth your time. So I would say buy this game as well. So there we go. That's what I made of September's PlayStation 4 games. I will be doing other videos for the PlayStation 3 and the PS Vita games as well. So please check those out. If you've played any of these games, please let me know what you thought about them. Until next time though, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>